Hello guys and welcome to a video I've been wanting to make for a while. I have seen a lot of my favorite creators take a step back from YouTube and kind of put out videos where they explain why they left YouTube slash why they're taking a break from YouTube and, and so stuff like that. Uh, and how they are finding creativity elsewhere. Now, now, why exactly are they leaving? That's kind of why you clicked on this video, right? Uh, there are two main things. There's passion, and then there's the YouTube algorithm. And I'll, I'll go in depth with both of them. Uh, I, I won't exactly explain how uh, YouTube algorithm works, and I can't exactly explain how passion is for everyone. But I will tell you on surface level why everyone is is kind of leaving YouTube for a little while or they're leaving YouTube forever because they feel like they themselves are getting depressed. They feel like they're not getting enough headroom in their lives. They feel like it's not worth doing anymore. Now, I myself don't really share that, but I can see exactly where they're coming from. I've been on YouTube for six, seven, seven years now, I think. Yeah, it's se seven years, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and uh, in that time, I have certainly felt the punishment of YouTube's algorithm because I want to make my own videos. Now, this is not going to be about me. This is going to be everyone else. But I will start by saying that... I myself uh, have created videos I want to make. I've not been following trends uh, unless I uh, short counts because I made short videos and they did well, but now they're not doing as well anymore. Um, and I can with certainty say that the algorithm punishes creativity and it doesn't promote it. Now, before everyone starts screaming at me, what is creativity? It is making something different, something unique something new right and that is part of the passion aspect if you create videos on youtube you want to create something that you identify with something that says hey this is me Th this is my content this is what i make please watch my content see what you guys think about it we can enjoy it together Th that is how i at least feel with every single video i put out how do you feel about my content this is technically our content. Now that you watch it, we can make content in the future together. And uh, th that is one aspect to the passion um, that is very important. The fact that you just kind of want to share something and you want to see what someone else wants and just kind of what everyone else's view is on it. And it's always nice to hear what other people think, whether it's negative or positive. How can you improve? Is it something you want to improve? Because I've gotten comments in the past that's like, yeah, you know, if you did more editing in your videos, you would probably do better. And I'm like, yes, I, I probably would do better in all honesty. But then it's not something I am making. It's something only they are making because it's not something I want to do. Um, although I, I have been thinking maybe I could cut down and edit a little bit since it is feedback I'm getting from a viewer. I could do that in the future whenever I have time. But that's kind of the thing. If I put time to something I'm not passionate about and I waste that time doing that where I could have done something I was more passionate about, then I'll be conflicting within myself whether or not it is something I should be doing in the first place. If you guys get what I mean. So the, the passion aspect is everything for the creator. It's something that you build yourself on. It's how you build yourself up. It's like going, wow, this video got a lot of views. Uh, maybe people like that. I'm happy people like that. It's great to see people enjoy things I make. Because I know that if I make people happy, I will be happy. And if people just generally enjoy what I make, that's great too. Uh, then there's the aspect of it doesn't matter if it's great as long as it earns money or get lots of views. And that's another aspect to the passion because passion itself doesn't necessarily mean that you always want to make new content or um, be creative or, um, or make unique things. Sometimes you just want to see numbers go up and sometimes that is what creators go for now i don't go for that it is just an aspect i have to deal with i kind of have to see my numbers go up otherwise i'm not growing and then i would be stagnating and uh, and then i'll get less views and then my point is to share it with people and then i'll eventually go down um at the bottom of the the well so to speak so what 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 is the value of youtube well youtube values money uh and and money is views and the creator gets translated into, or the translator, or the creator, sorry, is part of that equation. And when the creator 
is the one. Uh, but I don't have a script or anything. I'm just saying this out of the top of my head. Um, but this is how I feel about everything. So the creator is part of the the creator is part of the equation. Sorry, I still messed that up. And when the creator is part of the money equation, that means they have a part to play in that whole equation, which is get a lot of views, um, get make people watch a lot of ads. Make sure that uh, creators give YouTube money. Uh, and then they can get some money in their own pockets at the same time. Now, I'm happy and appreciate that YouTube gives the creators options to be part of that kind of whole thing, you know? I, I appreciate that I get to make money off of ads. I appreciate that I have the opportunity to do so and that I can get it cut from, from the ads. But that doesn't justify how the algorithm works. And it's shared throughout all of YouTube that the algorithm sucks. Now, why does it suck? Everyone is just claiming, well, it, it sucks because uh, it's it's just everyone um, makes different videos. It's changed. It's, it's, it's different now. Uh, and yes, that's true. But on a level that's fundamental, how has it changed? And I don't think I've seen anyone talk about that. I also haven't seen anyone really talk about um, what the algorithm appeals to. Like YouTube themselves, I watch all their creator videos, like all the explanations and stuff. And YouTube themselves are really kind of beating around the bush of what the algorithm is. You can kind of tell when they speak about it that it's like, oh, we are sending, we are, we are getting a seed audience. And, and everyone, based on their reaction, it gets pushed out to more people. And I'm just sitting there like... Yes, but you don't control what that seed audience is. Uh, and you guys can decide to add another variable to the system whenever you feel like it to promote certain kind of videos. Now, I don't think they do that that often. I think they've done it with shorts in the beginning and now they're kind of trying to dial it down a bit. Uh, but overall, the way the algorithm works is it takes a group of people, shows the video to that group of people. Those people determine whether they like it or not. And if they all do end up liking it, it gets pushed to more people and then they'll get pushed to more people and so on and so forth. And that's how you kind of go viral with videos. Um, and on, on a level, it makes sense. Like it makes sense that it works like that, right? But the problem is, right, when you appeal to a big audience, a big group of people, um, we can all agree that niche content is probably more creative more detailed and more interesting, right? Now, what happens when a niche suddenly becomes something everyone likes? And and what I mean by that is, let's take reaction videos, uh, because that's a very big thing. So reaction videos actually didn't start becoming a popular thing until maybe, I don't know, six, seven years ago when I started. Uh, maybe it's always been like a niche thing where a lot of creators did make it, but not most creators. Because gaming kind of started being the thing that kind of formed YouTube and those weird funny videos that everyone saw. Um, but then now, now we have reaction videos being huge. And what they react to is, is different stuff like announcements and trailers and whatever not. So why did that suddenly become popular? Well, it's because it was a niche that showed that most people want that kind of thing, right? Most people want to see that. The more YouTube grew, the more mainstream YouTube became, the more mainstream the audience became. And, and the more mainstream the audience becomes, the more mainstream videos will be promoted. Okay, it makes sense so far, right? So because reaction videos were appealing to normal everyday people uh, that kind of enjoy just watching people sit there and talk and react to things that they themselves have an interest in, or uh, not even have an interest in just random stuff. Uh, because it take, makes them forget about that day and it's nice to kind of look at it. Then all of a sudden, now that niche blows up. And and more and more normal people come to the platform. Or oh, what's the next big thing? Oh, um, documentaries and 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 real life stories and uh, and stuff like that, right? So essentially... The audience is indeed controlling the content that is popular on YouTube. YouTube has been straightforward with that, they have explained that. But what YouTube forgets is that big creators or creators that are already big uh, at the time of the algorithm kind of controls the wave the algorithm follows. 
Uh, we can use PewDiePie and Markiplier as an example. In the beginning, they made gameplay videos, and gameplay videos was the bomb on YouTube. It was great. It was awesome. Um, then gaming started slowing down. Then PewDiePie played Minecraft. A lot of people started playing Minecraft. I don't know if he was the beginning of it or if he, if he was following a trend at that point. But it, when he played Minecraft again, Minecraft had a new resurgence on YouTube as well. And all of a sudden, Minecraft became big again. Now, uh, that that is what I call a wave myself. So it's a wave that goes up and goes down again. Because it is something a big creator did. Because a big creator has a big part of the main audience on YouTube. And so they control, and about all of this is going to make sense when I come to the conclusion of, of like passion and the, the algorithm. Uh, but the big, con the big creator is the one who kind of controls the wave that YouTube follows. Now back then, who was the biggest creator? It was PewDiePie, a gamer, uh, a person who made video games. Um, or, or played video games and did some real life stuff. You know, when, when vlogs also grew, he also made vlogs and, and, and stuff like that. All creators started doing vlogs because, again, mainstream audience, more and more people came to YouTube. More and more people starting becoming the mainstream audience on YouTube. And all niches and all creativity suffers because of it. So if you don't follow the mainstream, your videos will not do well. Now you can argue that, oh, that's not true. Um, I made a video about, I don't know, uh, this thing and it did well. But have you done an actual creative thing no one else has done? Have you made a video in real life or about random stuff that no one has made before? Are you merely copying someone else? What they've done? Um, or oh, what worked well in the past doesn't work for you now for some reason. That's also been a big thing that all of the leaving YouTubers have said. Um, so they used to be able to do this, but now they feel like they can't because the views aren't there, but they still get a lot of views. Now, I used to be the kind of person that's like, why are you guys leaving? You have everything you want right here on YouTube. Why are you leaving? You're still getting a very huge amount of views. You're still earning a ton of money. Uh, you, you, you are easily able to keep this up if you really want to. And that's the algorithm part of it, right? But what you don't understand about that part is on YouTube, we have an analytics system. And this analytics system is messing with the psyche of all YouTubers worldwide. Because it shows you when you do good and when you do bad. So let's say you have a video that follows a trend, right? And it's like, oh my god, we're getting so many views now. Jesus Christ, that's crazy. More people will follow that trend if you're a big YouTuber. That means more people will do that trend. That means if you keep doing that, it will eventually die down. Someone else might do better than you. And, and take you over in that trend. Because now it's going to be trend chasing. And who gets to the top of the trend? It could be that the, a, a small YouTuber suddenly grows big. Because now they did this trend. Because they did it better than you. But it is still not being creative. That is just copying a trend and kind of just putting your own spin on it. Now you can argue that that is technically being creative. Uh, trend chasing, but trying to add your own little title or your own little thumbnail or your own little like thing in the videos. A huge gaming thing right now is challenges, which I, I hate so much. But uh, people play games like saying... Oh, uh, can I beat this game with only pistols? Or can I pe beat this game with only uh, my fists? You know, all, all that kind of stuff. Or can you beat this game without killing somebody? And uh, again, th that pulls more people towards that trend. And I've seen that trend all over YouTube. I always try to get rid of those videos because I don't. I'm not interested in watching that kind of content. I, I'm interested in watching full gameplay walkthroughs. I'm interested in watching people actually play games. And the sad part is, I have trouble finding it. If you guys, if you guys play through video games and you speak English, please leave, leave your channel in the comment section or tell me you play through video games, because I straight up can't find you. Uh, I look up video games, but it, whenever I look something up on YouTube, I mean, you should try this by this way yourselves. Look up a let's play of of whatever video game, right? Now, now you will see a huge channel. Mo probably a woman on the front cover of the, the thingy because, you know, uh, that, that's apparently very popular with the mainstream audience. You'll probably see a woman uh, in a live stream playing a game 
and, uh, and and when you go further down, you'll see shorts, you'll see videos not even trying to be whatever you wrote, and and now you are in irrelevant videos that you didn't look up. That is how messed up this whole algorithm system is. That it goes from you look up specific things like a Let's Play, and the further down you go, the further away from Let's Plays you go, even though there are plenty of Let's Plays out there. I know that because um, I used to be able to go to um, uploaded by date and then I usually said uploaded an hour ago uh, in the search thingy and then I was able to find a lot of smaller channels because that way it didn't take the actual big channel into account. Um, but it doesn't work anymore. I tried and uh, it still shows bigger channels now and it shows a lot of shorts. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's very, it's very annoying. Um, and anyway, uh, I have trouble finding smaller channels and that means that translates to people have trouble finding me too. Uh, because I am make Let's Plays. And Let's Plays are kind of dying out. Now it's not a secret that they're dying out. It's not, a, it's not like they're dead. Uh, they're dying out because a lot of the people that likes Let's Plays are niche now. Let's Plays are niche. It, it's a simple truth to it. The mainstream doesn't watch niche content. The top player of YouTube, the top person on YouTube is a company now. The second one is a company. PewDiePie has gone so far down and he's a person. All companies kind of determine as well what YouTube's algorithm will be. Why is that relevant? Because the biggest creators determine what kind of content is popular on YouTube. That's correct, right? But what happens when a company takes over that does the same thing with people in the video that kind of reacts to stuff, that talks about stuff, uh, that is kind of random, then most people do the same thing. And all of a sudden we have trends like reaction videos, we have trends with people talking about top 10 video games, we have trends about people talking about um, the, the, the weirdest moments or the funniest moments in their lives and, 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 and weird memes that they react to. All that stuff um, is a consequence of pretty much bigger creators doing it, smaller creators copying. And whether you can hack, like whether you want to or not, copying the bigger creator is the way to go. You kind of have to copy the big creator if you want to get views and money. If that is what you're aiming for, you copy. And so everyone on YouTube did. The biggest channels that are now leaving, they copied. They, they, they copied first. Then they were like, oh yeah, I'm going to make this kind of content. It's going to be so much, it's, it's going to get me so many views, so much stuff. You make the kind of content and uh, then you make your usual video. The ones you actually enjoy making afterwards because you're like, oh, I can make this content once. It doesn't really matter. I can just enjoy making my older videos. You make this content once to see how many views and subscribers you get from it and, and how much money you get from it. Now you go back to what you're passionate about. You create a video that you really love, a video that you put your heart and soul into. And all of a sudden, it doesn't get that many views. It doesn't get that much money. It's almost as if the trend chasing you did doesn't translate into your channel permanently. And that's when you start realizing that, why am I doing this? Why, why am I making videos here that I'm not enjoying making? What's the point of doing this? Money? I mean, money. money's value is only uh, translated into the kind of life you want, right? So if you already have enough money, you already earned enough money from the trend chasing, and you, you want to get money from another job or something, you're just not interested in YouTube anymore. So what are you going to do now that you have you have enough money to really live whatever life you want? And if you really want to, you can just do another job that you're more interested in, that you're more passionate about. Because YouTube is all about the passion and all about the creativity. Or at least it used to be. But now it's all about who can be better at a trend than the other people. And when you compare your own creativity and passion against trends, your creativity and passion will always lose. It's the simple truth to it. There's no, there's no like saying no to that. And that goes back to the money and how you are part of YouTube's money-making system. So the reason why the mainstream audience is the one that your videos get fed to is because there are a lot of them. There's so many people. The odds of you getting 
a video sent to someone who is uh, who's a gamer is so low now that it, it, you, they have to be looking for game stuff pretty much and watch it every day before they might get it. And that's a might because the gaming is still kind of overbloated on YouTube. There's so many bad gaming videos. There's so many good ones. Technically, it's subjective whether they're bad or not. Uh, but then you, some person sees a bad let's play, they assume all let's plays are like that, and then they block all let's plays. They see a good let's play, they assume all let's plays are like that, they get disappointed by a bad one. They decide to abandon let's plays. Uh, you kind of you kind of have to assume that the audience that your video gets to is pretty much a different person each time almost. And it, it's and you can kind of see who keeps watching your videos and who doesn't. And um, personally for me, I have definitely noticed that mainstream slash... Uh, trends always do better, uh, and I'm not I'm not even like being weird now or anything. I'm I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I make let's play videos. Uh, my let's play videos never really get any views. Like they, they get some views over time, but not enough to really keep me afloat. I earn almost no money on it right now. Um, I am part of the partner program. I appreciate, again, that I can earn money off of it, but unless I do trends, I'm not going to earn a lot. And even then, I kind of have to try to adjust my videos and my thumbnails for what people want. And now, now we get into a different situations where thumbnails, videos, and stuff becomes more and more the same. Everything on YouTube becomes more and more the same, because everyone tries to appeal to the same mainstream audience. Sometimes you can get lucky, you can hit a niche audience, depending on what you do. Uh, well, like with Fortnite or, or something like that. Uh, that's why sometimes it's recommended to make a channel specifically about a certain thing. Uh, but if, if you try to appeal to the Let's Play audience, as an example, it's already, there are so many other Let's Play channels. A lot of them have abandoned stuff now, and because there are less of them, and there's more of the other content, it becomes less and less recommended. I hope that makes sense. So, to conclude, like, as the conclusion for that would be, or the conclusion for that would be this. Because of the new mainstream audience YouTube, because YouTube has become as big as it has, um, it appeals to more mainstream people. Therefore, the more niche things that more mainstream people does, which is not gaming, uh, like to just watch other people talk to a camera and the, the way they find that is through a thumbnail. And the thumbnails, you also kind of need to make mainstream. So you appeal to the mainstream audience because they're the mainstream, right? You want all of their views. You don't want the views of a hundred people. You want the views of a million people. So you go ahead and make a thumbnail about boobs or, or with boobs in it or a butt or, um, or something that would appeal to the average man pretty much. Uh, I don't say that because I discriminate against women or anything. It's because, according to my analytics, I barely have any women watching. Uh, and it's mostly men, because men are more interested in gaming specifically, I suppose. Uh, but then you put a butt and boobs and stuff on it, because men are more... Uh, they're, they're more electronic. I, I, I don't, can't really... I can't technically make that claim, because I don't have any proof of that. Uh, but but I, as, as far as I understand, more men are on the internet than women are when it comes to, like, YouTube, especially. I, I, I don't have any real claims, so I could be very wrong. Don't take that as fact. And, and please don't scream at me. I understand that it could very well be wrong. But until I see otherwise, um, if, if, you, if you could, you could probably send me, like, a test or something that someone did below that proves me wrong. Um, until I see otherwise is what I'm going to assume, based on the data I have seen. So... Boobs and stuff on thumbnails always do pretty well, especially if it's a hot woman or something, a model. And then some text on there that goes like, what now? And then someone's face that's like surprised or something. I have seen all popular videos have those kind of things. And I mean like all popular videos pretty much. Now there are some videos that kind of does something different. And those channels I do watch and I do subscribe to them because they're kind of rare nowadays. But having to appeal to the mainstream is, is kind of the way to go on YouTube right now. It's just sad that you see it in the AAA game industry. Now, now I'm kind of losing people that are not into gaming. But if you look at AAA gaming, um, 
you will see a trend as well where they try to appeal to everyone but in appealing to everyone they appeal to no one and they don't get loyal people to them like no people are loyal to any of the big AAA games you can see the next call of duty everyone is like yeah the next call of duty is probably just going to be the same i mean i'm going to buy it because it's call of duty but i don't have any loyalty towards the company i don't have any loyalty towards anything in gaming and i myself don't have any loyalty to ubisoft um ea or any of the other companies because they can screw me over anytime they want but they are all tracing trends so people watch it and they play it anyway correct so they don't have to have the viewers loyalty but what happens when they keep making minimal viable products and what that translates to is is products that only just go above the finish line like like so let's say you want to make a game that does this let's make the minimum version of it let's make it so it's only surface level and it's not very deep and that's the product to ship out that's the game to ship out and when they've shipped that game out people up, get upset they lose loyalty towards the, the company and and it, like loyalty they barely had in the first place and people start looking at them associating them with that product now and and now people will start watching it less what i'm hinting at here is if youtube keeps doing this uh, more creators will abandon ship so to speak because the ship will be sinking in the eventual future the only reason why it hasn't yet is because there are no real competitors like there is bit shoot there are there are other things i think like library i think it's called something else now um but i have researched other alternatives because i myself don't really like youtube even though i appreciate what i can do and everything but it never hurts to to broaden up you know i don't i don't use any other stuff anymore but i tried them um and uh, it, it's just straight up a, a ship that's sinking it is sinking very slowly it's like a little bullet hole in the ship right uh, but the water is slowly coming in now and again, and water starting to fill out. No one is trying to fix that hole, and eventually it will erode and become bigger and bigger. And uh, it, it will become so big at some point that they're going to have to try and fix it. But then it's going to be like the Titanic, and because the, uh, the hole is going to get so big that they're going to ignore it and it's going to sink down. Creators will abandon ship. People will suffer because of it, because now now they can't watch content that the creators are interested in anymore. Uh, they can't like watch specific things that they are kind of interested in like gaming make i guess makeup is big for women i i will put that in there that, that if women watch youtube they probably watch your makeup or uh, gaming women could probably watch gaming too but again there's probably more men than females there um so when it comes to gaming especially it, it is slowly dying uh, because all of youtube is kind of becoming one thing uh, it is becoming real life videos about you talking and facing a camera and zooming in and out and catching attention of the, the, the people. And every single video in the future will probably be towards, like a towards that, because that's what most people watch. Now that I've spoken about that, let's go back to the passion and the creativity from the creator, right? In a YouTube where all of it is about talking to the camera, uh, or having a camera on you and looking at the camera and watching um essentially talking to the camera and playing and watching reaction videos or whatever uh we are now at a stage where people who don't do that are not going to get looked for or and if they are going to get looked for the algorithm on youtube prevents people from finding them because it thinks no one is interested in it so let's say i look up let's play of uh, dark souls 3 I will find Let's Plays of Dark Souls 3, but all of them are going to be people with webcam. Or they're going to be people with uh, uh, who's streaming. Or they're going to be people who, who, who does something very mainstream. Uh, and, and a person who does something different won't show up. Because they aren't appealing to the same people. They aren't appealing to the mainstream. The mainstream prefers to watch people's reactions to stuff because uh, they like the human element. But what if you just want to relax and watch someone play the game and then want to watch the actual full game? That's the kind of person I am. I like to watch a full screen of the game. And I don't want to have a face constantly in the corner to look at or distract me from the game. I don't want that. And there's also a lot of talk about the younger generation and TikTok and stuff. And I do 
think TikTok is on on a smaller scale harming creativity. Uh, slash, it's harming the idea of of short form content, N- not because people have short term like attention spans, but because everyone has short term attention spans, and because why watch a full video that's twenty minutes long if you can watch a short video and get the same out of it, you know? But the problem is you won't get the same out of it. They might say the same things, but you won't get the same experience out of it. It won't be as personal. That's just another short video with another creator. All right, on to the next creator. All right, they also have a short video. Boom. You don't connect to the creator. You don't have the long sense of, of like, uh, you know how you, when you the longer you spend time with someone, the more you get to know them, the more you get to understand them. That's not Dan Shorts. That's not Dan TikTok. It's merely about what they show in the video itself. And then I might think, oh, that's neat. All right, let's go ahead and 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 subscribe to them. Um, as far as I understand, short form people who join short form content or join shorts on YouTube, uh, they tend to not really come back and watch your main videos. Now, th- th- there are exceptions, of course. There are probably some of you that do. But most people who watch shorts on my channel don't watch anything else other than shorts. And they're not interested in watching anything other than shorts. And if they subscribe to me, they might unsubscribe, like, in two hours, as an example, that's happened before where like I get 10 subscribers, but five of them is unsubscribed like 10 hours later. And it's not uncommon. It's, it's not different or anything. It's, it happens. Um, so you want to create content that's creative. You want YouTube to recognize that it's content as creative and different, which is what YouTube used to stand for, making different and creative content that you can share with the world. It's incredible. Like, if you hear that out of my mouth, right? It sounds incredible. Like, it sounds incredible. You can make content online that you can share with the whole world. And they can see what you make. And it's it's a dream come true, right? Until you realize that there are other people doing the same thing. And whenever you have a bunch of lines that try to do the same thing, everyone is going to go towards the thing, right? That gives you the most out of most bang for your buck, so to speak. Or, or mo- yeah, most buck for your bang, I guess I can say in... That sounded wrong, but in that con, you know what I mean. Uh, the more people that do... The more people that get successful doing one thing, all other people strength to try towards that thing. And the more people that realize that that thing is popular, the more people do that. And instead of 100 lines, you now have 50 lines of people doing something creative and different. Instead of 50, now you have 10. 10 themes and trends that guarantees to give you views. But that's not going to last forever, because now that everyone is doing it, it is on. A, it's now a sinking ship. What will the next trend be? Then everyone starts to go to that thread instead. You might still have ten threads, but it's not the same as before. Now everyone keeps moving. All the trends keep moving to to all the creators, and all the creators keep copying those trends. And YouTube, essentially, because of how the algorithm treats all the videos will eventually have all the trends be the main point of YouTube. There won't be any creativity left besides creativity trying to appeal to a trend. And and I get that over all trends, like gaming as an example, it used to be a trend, but it's more of a theme, I would argue. Same thing with uh, vlogs. A bit more of a theme, but because they're vlogs about your life, and you walking around, they become somewhat of a trend. Uh, or rather, real-life camera footage, I guess, can also be called a vlog or whatever. Um, that's more of a theme. Uh, specific themes and topics are not trends. It's only when they get blown out of proportion, they're trends. Let's just get it out of the way. So, essentially, what I'm saying here is... YouTubers are leaving because the reason they joined YouTube in the first place was to be creative and make something different. And to look at some other creators that are stopping with uploading, they don't upload as often, and they're kind of saying they're kind of done. Uh, Call me Kevin, Jacksepticeye, um, Markiplier. Those three creators specifically, uh, they all mentioned one thing. That's the same. Now, Markiplier has not made a I'll be leaving video. Uh, or rather, he hasn't made a I will be going away for a while video. 
But he did mention the same thing the other two did, and that is that they don't find the creative juices anymore on YouTube. They don't, they can't, they don't feel like they're creative anymore on YouTube. They want to find creativity and passion somewhere else. Markiplier is making movies. Jacksepticeye wants to make comics or, or magazines. I think it was comics, he said. My, my, my bad. It was like a, a couple of weeks ago I watched it. But I think it was comics. He wanted to make his own comics. Can you make comics on YouTube? Technically, yes. But he doesn't feel like it is good enough. He, he feels like it won't get the same feeling that he gets. It's not as creative because he has to appeal to the algorithm. And at the same time, you also have Call Me Kevin who's like, yeah, it was a while ago I stopped being interested in YouTube because it started as a hobby, then it became a job. And because it became more of a more of a, uh, a job, he felt like he had to become better and better and appeal more and more to the algorithm. He also had to leave eventually. And, or rather, step back eventually for a little while, going on vacation or whatever. I think he called it retirement. <laughs> and anyway. And, and... The people who, who are more into, like, they did what they wanted to on YouTube, I still think they feel the same way. I just don't think they realize it. it. It's obvious when you think about it. Everyone is leaving YouTube because they don't feel the passion and creativity anymore. Because they have to appeal to, essentially, a boss that says, you you did well. Uh, um, here, have a, have money for it. Or, essentially, they, they present a product they were creative about and they thought people might like, and they say, no, 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 other people are creating this thing, therefore you shouldn't create that, because that's not going to sell well. And that's essentially the problem we're in. Either you create something that sells well, that fulfills your desire to improve, or you have a product that your boss is essentially saying, you can put it out, but that sucks. And when you look at the analytics, like I mentioned, and you see the trend video doing good, but you see your creativity and passion doing bad. You get turned off. You, you, you just go, wow, that's so sad. Why do we live in a world like that? And it can be fixed. It can be fixed by having categories of YouTube. Don't really have YouTube kids make YouTube gaming. Instead of having gaming be an overall mix of everything. Instead of forcing shorts on people, they can remove shorts or have it as an option. But YouTube knows that if they do that, they're going to earn less money. And they, therefore, they don't want to do that. Um, another thing I want to point out that could also be a cause is they're going more mobile. Uh, they're going more AI. Uh, and that also kind of kills creativity. Now, it can also help creativity, depending on what you do with it. The creators are in control. But imagine if you give 100 people a tool that you can pretty much just automate a video with. How many of those people do you think is actually going to put effort into just recording themselves editing it and doing whatever they want with it when they can just kind of plop everything with AI and then say, I'm done with it and this is going to earn a lot of money. And the people who are creative are like, I was creative with mine. I didn't earn a lot of money. I spent longer on mine. That's sad. And that's why people are leaving YouTube. That That's, that's why I sometimes feel a bit down because of my videos. I'm not going to say that I feel the same way they do because I never considered leaving YouTube and I'm not big or anything. And I don't expect this video to blow up. Um, I just want to put a video out there because seeing people leave breaks my heart. As someone who truly and deeply enjoys doing this, I, I and someone with a, I, I would call myself, I have somewhat strong psyche. I, 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 I feel bad for them. I don't take pity on them. I see the situation and I'm like, that's sad. I hope I don't end up that way. And I don't, especially, I don't really take pity on them, but I understand where they come from. And I get exactly what they mean, because I feel the same way. I just don't feel it to that extent. And that means the higher you get, I'm guessing it's because when, when you get big, the amount of money difference from views is also huger than for me. Like, I barely earn anything, but imagine earning, like, uh, let's just say a random number. Maybe unrealistic, maybe realistic. I don't know how big YouTube, much big YouTube's earn, but let's say a thousand dollars, right? And then you earn a hundred dollars. That is that is a lot of money difference, because you followed your, your 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 what you wanted to do, and and that you know how you get dopamine whenever you're successful. You know what that tells you? That tells you that you have you 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 feel like you improved the day before, right? Because you put out this video, but then it feels like you became worse at what you're doing, and 
when you become worse at something, you get demotivated and then you don't get stuff done. Then you don't feel like doing it anymore. There are so many things wrong with appealing to mass audiences and not trying to improve the smaller things that uh, eventually the platform won't have any meaning, loyal followers or anything. And, and that's kind of what it comes down to. If YouTube one day dies, if something competes with YouTube, I don't think anyone will feel that YouTube is nice, kind, or, or, or good to be in. I'm pretty sure everyone knows YouTube kind of sucks. And I'm pretty sure everyone deep down kind of want YouTube to get a competitor that they can join instead. But there isn't one. Uh, and because I have no loyalty to YouTube and because I don't feel like there is a big incentive, like I don't feel like they care about creators and ultimately that could also be why people are leaving but while they don't care about creators i can still upload and do stuff and still earn money on it but yeah ultimately i just think that they just lost their passion for what they're doing it's, it's as simple as that because youtube only really likes trends popular content and women and thumbnails and um yeah, essentially it comes down to trend chasing and making what everyone else is already making, but making it more intertwined and different. Like like a little branch, like a tree with branches. This is essentially what they wanted to make. But if you don't have that tree and you don't make a branch of that tree and you have another tree, that tree is not going to get any branches. And if it doesn't have any branches, and if it isn't big, then no one is going to notice a tree. It's a tiny little sap that's not going to grow. And it stays and stuck like that. That uh, And the big tree will slowly over time die. While the smaller tree will also die over time. Even though it's younger and wants to grow. A little bit of symbolism for you there. Um, this video has been quite long. And uh, I'm sorry I didn't have a script or anything. I just wanted to talk out of the heart and out of my, my head. Uh, I, I wanted to tell you guys that, again, I do appreciate all the views and the fact that I can earn money on YouTube. And I appreciate every single one of you watching. Like, I really, really deeply do. Like, I always think that no creator cares about the audience as much as I do. But they probably do. Uh, I, 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 they, I bet they probably do. I, I think they actually care. And uh, if they care as much as me uh, and, and they get as heartbroken as I do when it comes to not being able to be creative and make what you want for the audience that you feel like are loyal to you and like you, it, it must break in something inside of them when they just can't do what they want to do. And, and, and their audience just seems to abandon them, even though the audience doesn't get a chance to support them. It, it, it must just hurt. Like, I'm just, I'm just going to be honest. Like, I know that you're random numbers on the internet. Like, I know that's technically what you are. But deeper than that, your people in real life watching this content, your, your people deciding to watch my content over someone else's content, or even taking the time of your day to watch my content instead of someone else's at the same time, or just, just, just the fact that you, you just straight up take the time. Even if it's 10 minutes, even if it's 5 minutes, just take some time watching my content. It means the world to me. And if you... If you don't want to watch it, that's, that's fine. Then I hope you bring someone else the same joy that I would have had otherwise, but... I I, I just sucks to see people lose that sense of, of community and, and, and loyalty and, and, and people. I, I don't... Something that YouTube and big companies just don't have normal people are starting to lose those because of the big companies and it's just it just sucks they can technically put out any kind of video and do well but they're not going to do great and because they can't do great they're kind of just saying screw it i, I the one stuff i don't want to make just doesn't do anything anyway to sum it up before i end the video um big youtubers are leaving because the algorithm appeals to mass audiences. Because YouTube's audience has grown over the years to become very mainstream, only mainstream content really gets promoted. Whether you look for small content or not, mainstream content will still be appealed or will still be popped in your face. 
Whether you like it or not, you will always find mainstream content before you find the good niche content that you're actually looking for, even if you use the search function on YouTube. And that means that videos that are made outside of the, of the, the popular stuff won't really get found that easily. You can still find it if you look deep enough, but usually you won't find it. Uh, unless someone tells you about a channel they randomly found someday because a small number of people are pretty much guaranteed to find your niche and, and, and small content. So it's not the viewer's fault per se, but it's also the fact that there are more normal people using YouTube that then uh, where normal content pretty much only appeals to them. So in essence, YouTube has always been truthful and, and honest when they've said the audience controls how your video would do. What this didn't say is the audience has changed from back then to now and the top YouTubers have also changed. And if most YouTubers take a look at the most subscribed channels, then of course, the biggest channels are companies. And because you watch company stuff, they're typically very minimal effort and reactionary and um, and just kind of not passionate because, you know, it, you can still make something passionate of your company, but typically it is very minimum viable product, as I mentioned. And that means small creators like me, small creators like maybe you, and, small, and, and, and all the small creators will have a hard time growing unless we follow trends. Now, if you follow trends, you're probably going to be fine. But if you have pride like me, <laughs> or at least you, if you feel like you're going to go away from why you started YouTube in the first place, because if I start following trends myself, I lose uh, the reason why I started doing YouTube. And then I would question why I'm doing it in the first place. Whereas if you ask an already famous YouTuber who's chasing trends, they're just maybe happy about the money so it also depends on the person you are well that's the that's the gist of it passion creativity versus the algorithm the algorithm always wins because the audience is kind of built around what's famous if your passion and creativity correlates with the algorithm you'll get a lot of views that's the truth to it if you love making reaction videos, if you love making, and, and you can make them unique too, to a certain extent, you could be a little bit creative and passionate with those. And, and you can essentially do that too. Or you can live stream and, and make the live stream super appealing by doing random stuff. Then if your passion correlates to the algorithm, you'll do fine. And that's why so many people still blow up because either they are appealing to the algorithm and they don't care about passion and creativity and they're kind of just doing it when they have free time and they're not passionate about it and they just see the money value, they do fine. If you have people who who have the same passion and creativity for creating the mainstream trending stuff like shorts and um, TikToks and, and stuff like that, they're also going to do fine. I, I just think most people, in all honesty, just want to create what they want to create and... Because they have made content they don't like for so long, they're just fed up with it, and they leave. Uh, but all of that is all based on my own speculation of the information I've seen from other videos. Like I said, uh, Mad Pat, I think that's his name, um, and the other guy who did weird videos, uh, both of them said that they just felt like they have re like done what they wanted to on YouTube. Now, personally, I don't really think that is the case. I just think they lost passion for doing it on YouTube in the first place. Either that uh, or they really feel that way, which is weird considering that you started YouTube in the first place to be creative and then you're abandoning that channel and creativity for what? For just feeling like you're done with it now? I don't know. It's always weird that someone says that. It reminds me of when someone leaves a company and they say, oh, it's on good terms and later you figure out they have some kind of inner strife because they were either passionate about it, but because they were passionate about it, they were always in the face of the people making the thing. And then eventually they were like, yeah, you you become a, a thorn in the side. This is our project. We can get rid of you. Boom. Um, we don't want creativity and passion in this. Uh, but yeah, anyway, anyway um, I do hope you guys understood on slash understand what I mean. Uh, if you do, you can leave a comment in the comment section telling me if I'm right or wrong, uh, what I forgot to talk about, or uh, your experience with the YouTube's algorithm. Like, am I wrong? Like, I have no proof of this. Uh, this is how I personally feel and, and how I felt like when I watched those videos of people leaving. 
uh also how how it seems to be like the fact that i can't even find let's play like let's plays of other channels that are similar to mine is is saddening to me because i want to watch those like leave your channel leave your let's play channel in the comment section if you make a let's play channel i'll subscribe to you i'll watch you i, I i'm looking for people like that i have trouble finding people like that i need more people like that so uh yeah hope you guys enjoyed the video uh as sad as it is i i, I just wanted to get this out of my chest i i've seen so many people have it it's been building up inside of me that people abandon something i really want uh i i i get it but it's sad to see like if you guys want it you know how you see rivals right you see someone that's huge up and you want to reach their level and then they just throw it all away you get insulted you know because they they, they had everything you wanted and they they just throw it away like like i wanted that why can't i have that and, and, and you guys just saying it's not worth it to you? It, it, it hurts when that happens. And I hope you guys understand me. I, I'm being honest with you when I'm saying this. I'm not going to say I just really care about them. No, no, they're big channels. They, they have worked hard to get what they want and just throw it all away. And it's something I want myself. I would never throw that away. It's something they... In all honesty, if they can throw it away like that, they shouldn't have it. But I... I, I think they'd still deserve it, but they should hold on to it. And, and instead of going with the waves, they should go against the current. You know, in, instead of appealing to the algorithm, they should try doing what they want to do, whether their videos do well or not. And eventually the algorithm will have to acknowledge that their videos exist because they're big. They can fight this, but they don't do it. And they just leave. So... Yeah, uh, this is a little jealousy from my part. I'm being completely honest when I'm saying this. I, I hope my transparency is clear to people. You can call me a, a butthole if you want, but that's, just, that's how I feel about it. So many big channels leaving hurts both because I feel sad for them, but also because if I had that, I wouldn't leave it behind. And the fact that YouTube is forcing them to do that means I don't have any rivals anymore. And if I don't have any rivals, then I have nothing to compare myself to, to work hard towards. But yes, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I uh, hope to see you in another one of my videos. I am truly passionate about this. I love the creativity. My videos might not be the most passionate. Uh, actually, they are passionate, but they might not be the most creative videos ever. But I have the passion for it. I can believe, believe you me. I love video games and I love playing games. And that's kind of how I have my passion because passion is different for everyone. Uh, and I'm planning on being more creative with it. Don't you worry. It's just right now, time... And money is a thing that is important. And uh, because time is not something I have infinite of, I, I can't really make the kind of content that could be more creative for my part. But yes, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Even though it is a bit sad, uh, consider liking, subscribing and sharing, of course, if you want this to, I don't know, blow up, even though it's not gonna, but I might as well put this video out there. In case you're a future person watching this, thank you for watching. You probably hate me now, but I'm, I've been completely honest with you. And um, <laughs> and I really would love YouTube to change. But the fact is, it's probably not going to change. Because instead of everyone fighting back, everyone's leaving. And uh, while I can see why, because it's just... If, if they're fine with their life and they want to focus on something else, it's their choice to make. They're not responsible to any of us here on the platform. But they need to set some kind of example at some point. They need to do something to show that we need to have channels be what they want to be. And um, yeah, I'm kind of hoping this will spark it, but it won't. I already know it won't, but uh, at least I hope you guys understand what you mean to me and, and that I won't do that. I won't leave you or anything behind on YouTube. Uh, they're doing it for their own psyches, and I respect them for that. But there are ways to adjust things, so you don't have to leave. There are ways to make things less mentally hard on yourself, instead of leaving. And I'm sad that they chose to leave, slash take a very big break, instead of just dumbing it down. Instead of making it like, maybe you play 30 minutes a day, and then you upload that once a month. 
Oh, uh, you upload that once a week. They're trying to dumb it down now, but eventually they'll leave. That's pretty much what they've said. So, um... Yeah. Uh, anyway. Hope to see you guys in one of my Let's Plays or other kind of videos I make. I make kind of different kind of videos. So, uh, yeah. Hope to see you in those. And uh, as always, stay awesome and hope you stay passionate and creative in what you believe in. Even if everything else kind of tries to get you to follow trends and, and do other stuff you don't want to do. <laughs>